All right, welcome back. And we're having conversations here on Breakfast Daily, different things happening around the country. And uh, you don't want to miss out on these conversations. We want to hear from you as well. The hashtag is Breakfast Daily. The WhatsApp line 0550585832. Now, we're going over to Kumasi right now. Mm -hmm. um, our colleague, Eduardo Pom Mafo, who is our bureau chief uh, for the Middle Belt of Ghana, um, is going to bring us some updates and on the UTAC strike. He's currently on uh, KNUSD campus. Um, Edward, good morning. Good morning, Dave. Yes, how are you doing this morning? Well, I'm doing great, and I hope you're fine. Yes, 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 very good. And um, so what does campus feel like? How does it feel like? Well, the usual KNUSD campus that looks very busy, um, it's not really looking like that. Uh, some busy areas actually look deserted now as we speak. Mm. Um, this area, um, if we're having normal um, academic work going on, yeah. you'll find that this area where I'm standing will yeah. be very busy. Mm. This is um, that's in between Republic Hall and the Unity Hall and okay. also the... Um, the independence hall as well so this is a busy stretch yeah. but it is not as busy as it used to be mm. and so that's the situation here um we have been talking to some of the students and they, they tell us that f for for them uh, because they have not been going for lectures uh, they just don't know what to really uh, do so they just stay in the room eat and then sleep that's what they've been doing mm. and so that has been the trend for some um, they have even decided to go home. Yeah. And so, basically, it, it, it's not as busy as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, is there a sense of, because uh, we read a story this morning that uh, you, you, UTAG is uh, open to negotiations. Is there a sense of hope that the strike will end anytime soon? Well, I have um, engaged some of the UTAG executives here yeah. at KNUST. And what they've been telling um, us is that for, for them, they are still negotiating. They feel that government has not really shown that commitment. And earlier, there were some assurances that government gave them. Mm. And they have not been able to go by them. So there's this issue about trust. Yeah. And so it's a major issue now. So they, they actually uh, don't have that urge to say, well, we are calling it off. And then maybe the issue will resurface. Because latter part of um, last academic year a similar issue happened and so they were expecting that um, every outstanding issue will be addressed but that didn't happen so they want to be fully assured that indeed this issue is addressed uh, before they say well we are coming back to the classroom but they are raising against time because uh, there's this rule where if academic work uh, is halted within a period mm. uh, the university will face imminent closure so be because of this issue, there was some of the lecturers have been telling me that, well, they are concerned about this. They don't want it to happen because their students will be affected. Uh, there are international students who are supposed to meet deadlines. There are PhD students. There are other students who are supposed to meet some specific timeline. So yeah. once uh, the entire academic calendar is truncated in a way, their students will be affected. And so it's a major issue that they want the stakeholders to find ways of addressing. But if you come here, you, you get to know that the students, um, most of them, are stranded. There's one young man I saw just a long, not long ago. Um, he is with his bags. And so I asked him where, um, where he was going to. Hello, what's your name? Um, Benjamin. All right, so Benjamin, I saw you with your bags earlier. So I was asking you where you're going to. Just for the benefit of our audience, what's the general plan? Which are you and why are you in this state? I'm in level 100. Right. And so you are with your bags. What is the plan? I'm going home. Where are you from? From Cantonment. So you're from Accra. Yeah, okay. Right. But for how long have you been here? For first years, school resumed on the 8th of this month. Yeah. Have you been there throughout? And how's it been? Just run us through how it has been for you. So I came on the 8th, the same three weeks. It has been three weeks from now. Yeah, the school, nothing is going on. We are just in the course. Uh, run, run me through how your routine has been. Okay. If and as if you wake up, how is it like? How has it been generally for you? I wake up at any time, go and eat and come back to the hall. Doing any, nothing, we don't do anything. And so, 
what about your finances? How is it like? <laughs> Things are expensive here. We've been cooking, but uh, you can't cook at, uh, every time, so you go out and buy some foods. I'm sure you have been talking to your family members as well. Um, what have they been telling you? So, so yesterday I received a message from dad. He said I should come home. Why? Because of the strike. And so that's why you've decided to yeah. go? Yeah. Um, so um, what's the plan? Now you don't know when school is going to resume. So you want to go, and then once you're here, that's when you come back. Yes, exactly. But there's this issue about this imminent closure of the universities. As a student, you're a first-year student, you yet to really feel lectures and all that. Mm. How does that make you feel? Right now, this thing happened since SHS. SHS, too, we're having the same problems. So I thought university would be better than how SHS is, but we've come to meet the same problems here. But so, how would it mean to you, let us understand, in case we say the academic year has been cancelled, how would it mean to you? It's very painful because we looked up to this uh, this thing. We looked up to this uh, tax because we were in SHS. We wanted to come to university to come and further our education. Most of us wanted to be architects and all that. But now we are here. The morale we came with here, now everything is down. Nobody can learn again. So what would be your call if, um, it, it, what would be your call on authorities that, uh, so that they help ensure that this issue will be addressed? So if they have to pay the lecturers, they have to do that so that we'll be able to go to school because we paid a lot of fees. We are here, it's like we've come to a hotel. Uh, so you, you said you, you were talking about architecture. Uh, what, what program are you doing? I'm offering construction technology and management. Mm. But do you have any idea about that? And what do you intend doing? I want to be a contractor, yeah. Mm. As you feel this is, in a way, hampering your ambitions? Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. Okay, so there are some other people that we have also been trying to engage, and so we'll, we'll try and engage some of them and, and uh, find out. But so, that's, okay, there are some, um, somewhere between uh, some um, beautiful ladies. Uh, let me start with you. What's your name? Vanessa Hayford. Vanessa? Yeah. What's your full name? Vanessa Hayford. Okay, what program? Political Studies. Right, okay. So, you are in first year too. Yes, sir. And let, let me just put this on record. For some of the continuing students who really know the terrain, some of them have actually left the campus and some have even gone home. And when you come to the traditional halls, that's where you find most of the first years. Because for the first years, uh, they are here. And when it's standard, first years who are around this area, some of them have even decided to go home. And uh, the, uh, th those who are very far from here have decided to stay on for some time because they just don't know um, when uh, the decision will be made. But let me get, so Vanessa, um, how has it been for you within this period? Oh, it has been stressful because I just wake up and take my bath and eat, then sleep again, doing nothing. That has been. And, and that has been a routine? Yes, please. R right, and within this period, what have you been doing? Nothing? Nothing, actually mm -hmm. nothing. I have no way to go in here. And does it affect you in terms of your finances? Oh, yes, a lot. A lot. I've been spending a lot on necessarily, yes. Mm. A lot. <laughs> and you are, where are you from? I'm from Takrade. You're from Takrade. But have you been talking to your family? Oh, yeah. My dad and my mom. I've been speaking to them. But has there been a call that, well, you should come home because you're not doing anything there? Yeah, I spoke to my mom yesterday and she was like, I should come home because I'm spending a lot here. I was like, That's the distance from here to Takarade is too much, so maybe I'll think about it. So you're still contemplating, you have not decided as to whether you'll be going? Yes, please. Right, okay. L let me get to you too. Uh, what's your name? Mamiyama. Mamiyama. Yeah. Uh, what program are you reading? Geography and Rural Development. Great. And so you to just run us through your, uh, your how it has been for you within this period. Okay. Um, I stay in Kumasi, so I mostly go home. I'm almost, I'm always home. Like every time I'm in the house. I just came here today to, to do my medicals. That's why I came here. But, but you are in the hall. Yes, please. Which of the halls are you? Independence Hall. Independence Hall. Yes. But because of a strike, you have been going home. Yes, I'm always in the house. But. You, you resumed on 8th of this month. Yes. Um, so within that period, what have you been doing? I understand you did your registration, orientation and all that. Yes. 
just let us get to know what has kept you busy, at least on campus. Okay, the orientations and then the medicals. And then we've been having some tutorials online on how to, you know, log into our e-learning app and things. So mm -hmm. when they give us um, an alert that we should come and do this, then I come to school and do it. After that, I'll go back home. So when it comes to your course, basically you have you have no idea specifically or even on the basis you have not started anything at all have you started something with your teaching assistants no but they've sent out some slides with my um department i think they are doing so well because they said what sent department again um humanities of uh, humanities and social sciences department yeah but i do geography and rural development and then economics as my minor but they've sent us more slides, you know, read on our own. But with their course, because it entails a lot of mathematics, I don't really understand. But the reading aspect, you know, I read through and then it's a bit okay. But I think, you know, I have to learn more from the lecturer too. So, But they are doing so well. They've sent us slides and, you know, handouts, you know, read through. Yeah, whilst we are not doing anything. Right. And so for you, you have been going home. So yeah. I'm sure you have had engagement. But when you're on campus... Do you spend a lot? I spend a lot. I actually go home because my things are getting finished. So, like, <laughs> I have to be going home to go and eat and then come back. That's why I always go home. Right. And um, so, what would you like to be done for you as a student? But you know, uh, there's this rule when you, school can actually close down. Or looking at if this issue is not re resolved as early as possible, school will be closing down. W w how do you feel about that? I feel very bad. And I'm thinking of my mommy's money too, because when they close down school, it's like they'll, they'll reserve their money or like everything will just cancel out just like that. So I'm just thinking about the fees and everything we've paid. Yes, that's what I'm thinking about. Like if they close down schools right now, will they keep those monies when we resume? Like we just continue or oh, we have to repay everything again. That's my worry right now. So what do you want to be done as, as, as exactly? speak to the leaders they are watching you yes yeah, so please i think they should give them they should give the utah what they want whatever they need i think they should settle them with what they want so they come back to class right thank you very much okay so there's another young man here um, who has joined me what's your name i'm ajakum kofi berma all right so ajakum uh Boji are you i'm in level 100 first year level 100 okay uh, what program are you reading BSc civil engineering. Okay, so tell us, how do you feel about this UTAC strike? Um, we weren't expecting this, but since you have come to meet it, you have to bear with it. So we are waiting for the government to um, take a decision. So we are we are in the waiting process. And does that make you feel stranded? How is it life for you? What have you been doing within this period? Yeah, we are very stranded because. Um, Staying in the room just like that, it won't help. And sometimes when you're reading your slides and you don't understand, you don't find anybody to ask him or her some questions to explain it to you. So we are very stranded. Yeah. And what, what exactly do you want to be done for you? We want them to come back and teach. Yeah. We want them to come and teach us. Right. Thank you very much. All right, Edward. So, Edward. Okay, David, and yes. earlier I spoke to the university relations officer mm. of KNUST, and he is actually saying that uh, so far there has not been any official communication to the students because they themselves, they don't know when uh, the strike will be called off. Yeah. And he's also saying that since uh, a mat the matter will be heard because uh, there's a legal process which is ongoing. Mm. They are waiting for the outcome on Thursday to know how okay. that matter uh, will turn out. And from Thursday, they, they will decide the next um, line of action. All right. Thank Th you. Edward, thank you so much uh, for, for, for updating us on what's going on. Thank you. Mm. All, right. All right. So that was our colleague um, and the uh, city, city TV's uh, bureau chief of the Middle Belt, um, Edward Point my for uh, Kokui, yes, yeah, <laughs> Charlie. My heart breaks for these students, yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking at the images there on campus, and it's just bringing yeah, back some nostalgia, memories. you know. But yeah. I, I mean, you, you, you go through your SHS, you write mm. your WASI, you get the results you need to mm. get into one of Ghana's top universities. Mm -hmm. 
only to be told that, well, you're going to spend your days lounging around waiting yeah. to hear what your fate is going yeah, to be, yeah, yeah. not knowing what the next day is going to bring. A whole month has gone by, yeah. no lessons, no lectures. You know, you know I went through nine months of this. Of nine months? Yeah, yeah I did, I did oh, this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the, I'm a veteran on, at this already. Yeah, I've but seen what? it before. So this was how many years ago? And we still can't get this yeah, right. Yeah, we can't get it right. Yeah, because we're refusing to get it right. This is our future, though. Yeah. This is literally our future yeah. being toyed yeah. with. Yeah. And I think it's about time, if they haven't already, it's a mess. Minister of Education, Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, get in a room, close yeah. the door, get in with UTAG, yep. and solve this and issue. And solve it once it's, and it's, for all. I mean, yeah. at this Absolutely. point, the students have suffered.